2015, you magnificent bastard. How many absolute gems have you produced this year? Too many to mention. Well, maybe not too many to mention, because I've mentioned quite a lot of them already. But still, 2015 has been a real blinder of a year for music. Uh, my passion and my enthusiasm for music, particularly rock and heavy metal, has really just gone up to another notch this year. There's been so many great releases which have really excited me and made me feel like I'm that 15-year-old kid that's impressed by any old shit again, which I was when I was listening to, you know, Spine Shank. Spine Shank are all right, just an example. But, uh, but yeah, it has been an absolutely fantastic year, and I think there's one more, maybe a few more, cherries on top of this particular delectable cake that we call 2015. One of them is coming up at the end of this month, October, just in time for Halloween, and it's the new album by Avatarium, which is going to be called The Girl with the Raven Mask. So Avatarium are going to be the focus of today's video. We're going to do something slightly different in that uh, usually we focus on current stuff that's just come out, but we're going to be looking back two years to their self-titled album and also looking forward to this new album, which is coming out in a couple of weeks. So this is Avatarium's self-titled album, and Avatarium, I'll give you a bit of background on the band. So they were formed by Leif Edlig, the bass player and main songwriter of the legendary doom metal band Candlemass. So Candlemass are no longer a recording outfit, at least, so this is his main focus. Originally, the um, lead singer role was intended to go to Mikhail Ackfeld from Opeth, who also is the main songwriter there, but for whatever reason, probably because he was so wrapped up with Opeth, he couldn't commit to this. So in steps a completely unknown singer, Jenny Ann Smith, plucked from complete obscurity. And that is really the birth of Avatarium and their sound. So what do they sound like? Well, for those of you who haven't heard them, they certainly retain a lot of the elements of doom metal that Leif Edlig is famous for and that Candlemass are famous for. There's a lot of crushing, heavy, gargantuan slabs of molten metal riffage coming out of the speakers on all of these songs. But there's a lot of different elements in there as well that we've not perhaps heard from Candlemass and a lot of Doom outfits, really. So there are elements of 70s rock. There's a much more driving, hard rock soloing approach in a lot of it. There's also little passages that remind me of Deep Purple, certainly a lot of the organ playing on here. There's beautiful acoustic passages which have got a much more 70s folk feel to it. And there's a bit of jazz and a bit of blues in there. A lot of just tiny little elements of different sounds with a doom metal core that make this such a refreshing, appealing listen. And a lot of this wonderful sonic soundscape is enhanced greatly by the vocals of Jenny Ann Smith. So this woman is much more in line with jazz and blues, I guess, than traditional heavy metal or the symphonic kind of gothic metal that, um, that is prevalent in a lot of metal songs. And she really does bring this band to life. She is the final missing piece of this puzzle. So... Her vocal approach is somewhere is much more in line with Adele than Sharon Dan Adele of Women Temptation, if we're gonna use disparate references here. But she really does enhance both the lyrics and the general atmosphere of all of the songs on here. So if we look at the opening song Moon Horse, which was the song where we first became aware of Avatarium, there's a, a beautiful blend of the, the fantasy, almost childhood uh, nightmare lyrics with heavy crushing riffs, with dark, acoustic, beautiful passages as well. And she really puts on a vocal showcase right out the gate on this as well. So you've got her beautiful, seductive, sultry vocals in the verse, and then the song really explodes at the end with these crushing, barbaric riffs and also this... Uh, explosive Ronnie James Dio kind of vocals as well a lot of these heavy heavy songs are punctuated beautifully with heavy singing on there as well 
she doesn't just have this one trick of jazzy, cool sounding vocals, a smoky husk, although that's a real important part of what she does here. She's also got the ability to really kind of reach into the heavens in a, uh, in a almost Ian Gillen, Ronnie James Dio kind of uh, kind of way. So there's a few 70s touch touchstones in here as well. There's some balls and grit to these vocals as well as uh, seductive beauty. So back to back, basically, and every single song they've actually done so far, they haven't done many songs. I think they've only done literally about... 10 songs in their actual career but every single one of them is a five star classic song and this is no different this is just balls to the wall back to back brilliant songwriting um there's not a wasted second on this album there's such a, a great flow to it there's a great change of pace to it just when it needs to and it manages to stick to one core sound without re without ever becoming boring or tiresome, or repetitive or derivative, um, which is certainly a skill taken over from Candlemas as well, who really had a very archetypal sound, but at the same time manages to sound so refreshing and vital. So that carries on throughout this album. So of course we mentioned Moonhorse, then we get to Pandora's Egg, which is more of a uh, heavy, heads down, banging song, but uh, with some creepy progressive moments. The, the title track, Avatarium, Again, is an absolute classic, a progressive classic that builds to beautiful slamming crescendos in between sinister passages and dark bits of shade punctuated by the odd little bit of light creeping through the window. But um, but yeah, this is this is a dark album in a really fun fun way. And um, Bone Flower is the best hit single of 2013 that was never a hit. Uh, they really change it completely to a poppy kind of rock song. It reminds me of uh, so many different things, like almost like a Jefferson Airplane with um, Grey Slick's kind of seductive vocals with an almost psychedelic background to it, but still retaining a rock metal undertone on it. Uh, Boneflower is an absolute classic. Bird of Prey, brilliant song about a serial killing butcher. Uh, again, because the vocals are so just committed and all in, she can really sell these lyrics, which in the wrong hands definitely would come across as a little bit too cheesy. And uh, Ties of Telepathy, what a beautiful, ominous riff. What a creepy, claustrophobic song. It just pulls you into these tiny little claustrophobic environments and then absolutely explodes with brutality. And you know the brutal bits are coming, but you just just waiting you're just waiting you're, you're on edge but in the most exhilarating way possible and the last song lady in the lamp well i can safely say it's the best song about a beautiful girl that's been trapped by a wizard and forced to sing and if she stops singing she'll die hands down i've got to say that it would be at the very least in my top three songs about evil wizards um and it is just a wonderful crescendo to the album one of the most brilliant guitar solos i've ever heard on there. There's absolutely astonishing bluesy soulful guitar solos with a bit of slide guitar going on there as well and it just absolutely soars and just caps things off beautifully. Um, I'll talk a little bit about their, uh, their EP that they released after that All I Want as well which has got again two classic songs All I Want and In The Deep Well. Uh, in The Deep Well has got the more progressive element to it All I Want's more in line with Boneflower, really catchy eerie song with, uh, with some kind of almost Middle Eastern uh, melody to it. Uh, metal bands love an Eastern melody. And it's, again, pure evil, and it's got about four live tracks from uh, the the title track, the first album. So it's, it's got live songs on there where you can really see that they are an explosive, fantastic live band. And I don't think they've actually came to the UK yet, but I really want them to. I can't wait to see them. So this has really psyched me up for their new album, um, which I've got about two weeks to wait for it. And you know what? I'm like a kid waiting for Christmas right now. So Avatarium are a band well worthy of your attention. Really thoroughly recommend checking them out, particularly if you are into just classic, great heavy metal. This is this is a real top classic heavy metal album. 
Uh, we're talking about Trivium and bands trying to bring classic heavy metal in. Well, this is the real, real deal. And you should totally check that out. So, yeah, Avatarium. I mean, I'm going to still give scores out of 10. I might even do away with the scoring thing altogether. But if I was going to, and let's do it today, I, I would 100% give this one a 10 out of 10. So, Avatarium, check them out. Let me know what you think. And uh, I look forward to talking about their new album uh, in the coming weeks. But for now, see you later.